That audience, that is people over 45, has been generally disregarded by networks. When people have really mastered their craft, and if they're funny, they're probably at their funniest, yet television hadn't been utilizing them. Uh, and rather than making them clowns, we had, uh, we had full rich lives for these women. The Golden Girls were funny, but flawed. The writers gave each character a distinct personality that immediately endeared the ladies to their fans. Dorothy! Dorothy Zbornak! The one who gave you the best years of her thighs? I loved it, you know, she, she saw the humor and everything, and uh, she was like the only one who really was grounded. Dorothy became the show's anchor, but with three other leading ladies, the writers had to come up with plenty of material. They gave each gal a specific role. The Rose character was the sweetest, most naive person on the face of the earth, and that lent itself to comedy. She took every word for what the surface of that word said. She didn't ever look for a hidden meaning or anything, but if you said I could eat a horse, she'd call the SPCA and have you put away. It's the longest she's been interested in any man since Paul McCartney. <laughs> Paul McCartney? Rue's character was a lot of bluster, very tough, uh, very sexual, and also, once you got past all that, extremely vulnerable. She was uh, a loving woman, Blanche, that is, um, very insecure. Oh, very insecure, and that's one reason she was always so concerned about her looks and, uh, uh, and being attractive to men. I also dream about food. Of course, I'm usually naked while I'm eating the food. I like Blanche very much. Blanche is one of the most optimistic characters I've ever played. She always, she never let anything get her down. Oh, you're right, I'm gorgeous. <laughs> I'm gonna have to meet men lying down. <laughs> I thought you did. <laughs> Sophia was, you know, world, you know, world weary and the wisest person in the world, and that lent itself to a lot of comic observations. She had had a stroke, and that that wiped out a lot of the uh, her mental editing, where you you say something kindly rather than she just told it like it is, and she'd go right for the jugular. I don't know what I would have done if Charlie had suddenly paid a visit. He's dead, you would have fainted. She said all those things with the straight, you know, face and eating the cracker and always holding the purse, and the audience loved her. Gin. Uh, you're taking advantage. You know, I'm whacked out on blood pressure medicine. And of course, it didn't hurt that she was a foot shorter than B. I think that was a brilliant piece of luck on everybody's part. Well, I think, first of all, nobody in the world is that short. And I think that was wonderful, the mother-daughter, you know, with the, my towering over her. Estelle Getty of the four was the least known. She did not become an actress till she was in her 50s. She's three months younger than B. Arthur, and she played her mother. I suppose it's because I'm so little, and it's because I play old well. I don't know. It's never, people ask me all the time whether that bothers me. It doesn't bother me because I'm an actor. I mean, that's what I do. If I had to play somebody who was six years old right now, I could do it. <laughs> Why is everybody in here laughing? You'll never work in this town again, none of you. They all ultimately were the mom that we all wanted, the favorite aunt that we all wanted, and had all those characteristics that, at least for myself, you know, that you'd, you'd respond to in your favorite aunt. By the end of its first year, The Golden Girls was one of the top 10 shows of the 1985-1986 season. I think one of the wonderful traits about the Golden Girls is that regardless of what the crisis was, you had this unbelievable sense of bonding that these women were totally there for each other. The truth was in the characters, uh, and the truth, uh, which is sometimes sad, is that we're afraid of being alone. Our families are gone and we're alone, and there are too many years left and I don't know what to do. Get a poodle. The fantasy of Golden Girls is that you can reconstruct a family, that you can come back together as a family. But I'll tell you, it could never happen in real life. Never. I mean, to get four women living together, never. But it made for, uh, it made for great TV. It made for great comedy. The Golden Girls were ready and willing to give their fans plenty of laughs. And the good times were about to reap the ladies some great rewards.
In its first season, The Golden Girls was a top 10 rated show. NBC studio chiefs expected the series would do well with an older audience who stayed home on Saturday nights. But the network bosses were a little surprised to learn the gals had a lot of fans who weren't ready for the rocking chair. Good night. Good night. Good night. The fact that these mature women didn't act like adults all the time, that it was outrageously funny. Bizarre. That resonated with a very young audience. That was also a lesson for us. You don't just have to go with young people on screen to get a younger audience. The whole thing was so anti-establishment, you know, that even kids loved it. Kids loved it. They loved the character of the mother, you know, who, who said the most outrageous things. And, uh, I'm back. So, did you and Artie play Find the Cannoli? Oh. It gives younger people an idea of of, of what could come, what, how they could be later on. I heard that from, I still do, from so many younger people. Thank you for letting us see what it's like to be middle-aged. The gay bars would, would close down at nine o'clock. They'd close the music down. They'd watch Golden Girls, and then they'd start the music back up. I think everybody was able to relate to the show because everybody saw the characters as, or parts of the characters as people in their own families. The Golden Girls didn't dwell on their age. Instead, they wrestled with real problems that crossed the generation gap. My son married a welder. <laughs> Too bad she didn't weld his zipper shut. They got 10 kids they can have. We decided early on that the things that, some of the things that worked best were issues that were real issues that these ladies could relate to and explore in a really honest way. Issues of sexuality, dating, uh, dealing with the loss of a loved one, divorce, uh, fam all kinds of family problems. So the heart, the truth, the emotion is what, what drew people to the, to the show. I haven't been with a man in that special way since Charlie died. Get out of here. It was an episode called Rose the Prude, and Rose, who was this naive character who had only been with one man in her life, and suddenly her, you know, she finds herself single again, and she's dating, and this guy's asked her, you know, to go on a cruise, and she thinks that there may be sex involved. Oh, back off, Blanche. Not all of us are classified by the Navy as a friendly port. <laughs> And, uh, you know, and the ladies band together to tell her, like, you know, you need to take a chance in life. You can't just hang out. But, honey, if you don't take a chance, nothing happens. I'm going to take a chance. Oh, that's wonderful. It's something that no one ever talked about before, and we found it was great to write to, and the ladies could play the hell out of it. Riviera, no. Who cares, Rose? Did you and Arnie hit the sheets or not? We didn't know the emotional center of some of these characters to the extent that it would give us a lot of stories. So it was a struggle, the first five or six, to get a rhythm of what, is the, what are the characters' backstories, what are their dreams, what are their desires, what are their problems to the extent that we'll be able to figure them out for 100 or 150 episodes. After 38 years, there are always bound to be some memories that stay with you. I wasn't talking about memories. I was talking about this. <laughs> There were such vulnerabilities in Dorothy. Her marriage to this flaky husband of hers who had left her for another woman was still a very major part of her life. I never should have called him. You never should have married him. The character Sophia, for example, in the pilot, she wasn't a storyteller. Uh, but we found out in the course of the show that her sharing her experiences, her life experiences, from her perspective as a refugee leaving Sicily during the war was interesting to people, and she'd always look at things from a historical perspective. Estelle was never happy being Italian. She kept saying, well, she kept saying, I don't know why I can't rewrite this and make her Jewish. If it were Jewish, I'd know how to do it. Of course, she was doing it beautifully. But she kept saying, why do I have to be Italian? Hey, Sophie, you're using too much rice. Fine, this elf quits. <laughs> the Rose character, her experiences in St. Olaf, that was something that we discovered when we were writing it. And